morning, and welcome to the UN's SDG Media Zone. My name is Lance Gould, and I'm the Executive Special Projects Editor at the Huffington Post. The purpose of the SDG Media Zone is to create a space where journalists, bloggers, and digital media influencers can take part in active discussions related to the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. This morning, I'll be hosting a conversation with the newly appointed president of the UN General Assembly, Peter Thompson. Welcome, Mr. President. Thank you. Before we get started, just a reminder to our audience that this program is interactive. Uh, if you'd like to join the conversation on social media, use the hashtags SDG Live or UNGA, U-N-G-A. Anyway, thank you for joining us, Mr. President. Thank you. You are from Fiji, which is a small island developing state. Can you give us your perspective on climate change as someone from a country on the front lines of rising sea levels and the importance of the 2030 agenda? Thank you for that. Uh, just before I answer your question, can I thank everybody who's been responsible for putting this tent together? I think it's a great idea, and I'll say something about that later on, about the importance of this tent uh, and uh, the message that we need to get out to the world. But yes, I, I do come from Fiji. Uh, for the last uh, six and a half years, I've been the ambassador of Fiji to the United Nations. Uh, and of course, coming from a small island developing state, uh, the, the matters of climate change are absolutely front and central for our work. Um, rising sea levels is what you think about, uh, first of all, when you come from a, a small island developing state. Uh, I have to say, in Fiji, we're lucky. We've got mountains, but uh, nevertheless, uh, we will uh, lose l huge elements of our infrastructure because so much of an island's infrastructure are down within two meters of the high-level um, uh, uh, watermark. But some of our neighbors, like Kiribati and Tuvalu, these are sovereign nations, uh, with thousands of years old cultures that are going to go underwater. And so, obviously, you, uh, you love your neighbor, and uh, we are deeply concerned about their welfare. But I would uh, project to the rest of the world, this is not just a problem for small island developing states. Uh, you only have to look at the great river deltas around the world, which are huge food baskets, home to tens of millions of people, to know that rising sea levels is not just a problem for islands. But uh, climate change is also um, uh, bringing the severity of weather patterns. Uh, in Fiji earlier this year, we had the strongest storm ever to make landfall in history in the southern hemisphere, Cyclone Winston. And our country is still recovering from that. We're rebuilding the schools and the houses. And the, the terrifying thing is that, you know, uh, it's Fiji this year. One of our neighbors will be next year, and thereafter, and thereafter, and thereafter until we get this climate change uh, phenomena under control. So, um, yeah, coming from the Pacific Islands, it's, a, it's up front and central is the main issue. Well, it's been one year since the SDGs have been agreed upon. What real progress has there been so far? What, what can we point to as, 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 as notable achievements? Um, I've just come back from a, a trip to China and to India, where I met the Prime Minister of India and the Premier of China, and we discussed in great detail the way that both those countries, and when you think of their size in terms of population, uh, that they, both those countries are well down the road in integrating the SDGs into their national uh, uh, planning, um, the, the national plans, uh, down to state level, province level. So at that level, uh, a lot of good work has been done over the last year. Uh, I think that the governments, and uh, the national planners have all embraced the SDGs. Where I am aware that we have so much more work to do is I don't think humanity as a whole yet uh, knows about the SDGs or has embraced them. And the stakes are so high with the, with the 230 Agenda and the 17 Sustainable Development Goals that every human being has to understand the importance of these uh, and, and has to see them as rights and responsibilities for every individual on the planet. Well, we mentioned that, uh, that you have gone from being the permanent representative of Fiji to now the position of, uh, of uh, President of the of General Assembly. How, uh, we'll, we'll come back to uh, disseminating uh, information about the SDGs to the wider world later, but for the moment, how are you going to hold uh, the member states' feet to the fire to try to get progress uh, along those lines? How, do you, how are you going to, uh, what, what, is, what is your leadership style? What are you going to do 
to uh, to keep people online and, and, uh, and perhaps different than than what's been done in the past, perhaps. Okay. Well, um, first of all, the message that I, that I've just uh, started on, which is transforming the world uh, through a universal push, and I stress universality, will be the central message in my opening of the general debate tomorrow. My message to the uh, heads of government, to the heads of state present will be that they have to get this message to their people. And what I'll be saying tomorrow is that I believe the SDGs should be taught in every school in the world so that uh, young people who are the inheritors of this agenda uh, will, as I say, see it as their rights and responsibilities of every individual. Beyond that, what I have done is I've created for the first time within my office uh, a team of uh, 10 to 12 experts led by uh, um, an ambassador from the south, uh, Ambassador Williams of Grenada. And on a day-to-day -day basis, they are going to be working on what we uh, must do to get the wheels turning on each of the 17 sustainable development goals. Uh, we have in, there, in that team uh, wonderful outreach, uh, members of the World Bank are there, uh, UNDP, uh, all of the relevant agencies are part of that. So that will be our outreach uh, to the community as a whole. You noted that there, uh, there are obviously 17 goals. You want to get 17 wheels turning. What do you foresee as being the biggest obstacle in, 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 uh, in, in achieving success? Well, you know, a lot of people say it's money, and obviously we're going to have to uh, be working hard on the, the resources side of things. Uh, and um, there's a lot of work to be done on that. But uh, for me, it's, the, it's, the, it's between the ears where all this happens. You know, as I say, uh, humanity has to embrace the goals and start transforming not just the world, but transforming ourselves. And in that regard, of course, you have to look at consumption and production patterns. You know, how, do you, how do you behave in your daily life? Is it in harmony with the 230 Agenda? knowing that the 230 Agenda is there to give our grandchildren a secure place on this planet. So it's not a trivial matter. I mean, when a lot of people talk about this, you sort of think back to the kind of hippie days when I was a, had a bit of hair, and these were kind of soft issues. But they're not soft issues now. They're about the survival of our, of our uh, species on this planet. And for those of you that have grandchildren like me, and uh, hopefully you all will one day, uh, you have to think ahead to their welfare so that we're not stealing the future away from them. Well, you mentioned your grandchildren. Uh, they were with you when you took your oath of office by your side. Um, your grandchildren will be young adults when the 2030 Agenda uh, hits, um, when it comes to fruition. How do we reach people your grandchildren's age? How do we reach the youth in order to disseminate the, the, the messages of the SDGs and the importance of the SDGs? And, and, and what will you be doing specifically to reach the youth? This is, uh, this is why I was stressing earlier. I believe that the SDGs must be taught in every classroom in the world. Uh, this is, to me, upfront, central work that needs to be done. And every head of state or head of government that I'm meeting or minister, I'm saying, please, take this back and get it into your national uh, school curriculums. Um, that is really the only way. If you think back to your own education when you were you know, between the years of 9 and 15, you're like a sponge. You're, you're absorbing uh, all this information. Um, and that's where the SDGs are going to be absorbed. Because, um, you know, I think of my own background when my teenage daughter was really the first one to ram home to me the importance uh, of treating our garbage properly. You know, I had, I had, I had never thought of that until my 13-year-old daughter started enforcing, uh, we were living in New Zealand at the time, enforcing separation of uh, rubbish into recyclables and so on. So the influence of children uh, should never be uh, underestimated. I have a few more questions here, but I want to remind the audience that this is an interactive uh, discussion, and so if you have questions uh, that you'd like to ask the uh, new president of the General Assembly, please send them to uh, hashtag SDG Live or hashtag UNGA. Or you can also send them to me at Lance Gould, Twitter at Lance Gould. Uh, moving on here, how important will it be to have the next American head of state actually believe that climate change is real? Okay, um, I think that's uh, a judgment for the American people to make rather than me. <laughs> but I think, you know, for all heads of government, all heads of state, 
Uh, we have all adopted the Paris Agreement. Ratification is proceeding um, on target, probably ahead of target, I'd say. Uh, we've got COP22 coming up. I really encourage those countries, and you know, I'm looking at a few of my European colleagues here, uh, to move on that ratification. Uh, we have to keep the momentum going on climate change. The, the good news is that uh, finance is now coming into the, uh, the uh, GEF. Uh, I would like to see procedures for that money getting out of the GEF into projects on the ground rolling as quickly as possible. All kidding aside about the United States, if, if, uh, if for some reason, and this is a possibility, if, if Donald Trump were to, were to win, do you fear that they would uh, not honor the, uh, the Paris Agreement? Um, it's not a, something I can really comment on. A, that, that's something that the American people will have to decide okay. on. You're going to, you will have a, a say in appointing the next uh, UN Secretary General. How important is it to have the, the next Secretary General be a general when it comes to the 2030 agenda? Um, yes, I've heard that distinction between a secretary and a general. Uh, the fact is that um, you have to be both. Uh, you're running an organization. You're really a, a CEO of uh, probably the most important organization in the world. Um, so you have to have both those qualities. Um, I think when you look at the caliber of candidates that are currently running, um, we can all be assured that we're going to get somebody of that caliber. I've got one more question, and then we're going to open it up to the floor here. But um, it, it, you're, you're new to the presidency. Um, Disruption is, is something that's part of the uh, is part of the tech culture that that, uh, that is uh, prevalent today. Do you do you plan on being disruptive at the UN to shake things up a little bit? For example, that we had a um, uh, there's a lot of transparency in, in selecting the new Secretary General this time around. That's that's relatively new. Do you plan on on, on, on being disruptive and, and and doing things in a different way? <laughs> Look, I've uh, got a reputation as being uh, a bit of a reformer. I don't see it as disruptive. Um, you know, when you're the president of the General Assembly, you've got 193 countries that you're responsible for. We have to move uh, together. But uh, I'm a very consultative guy. I've got a very consultative team. I've actually appointed a former permanent representative, Timor, specifically just to do outreach and strategic negotiation with the 193 member states. So I certainly don't intend uh, sitting on my hands. Uh, I think you can, you will see a progressive 71st session of the General Assembly. All right, let's take some uh, questions from the, from the audience, both here in New York and also from uh, from Twitter. Uh, anybody uh, here in the audience? Over here, just uh, say your name and then uh, give us your question. Hi, thank you very much. It's very inspiring. My name is Chioko Osborne, and I had a question about. Um, if you were to pick one of the 17 SDGs that you're particularly passionate about, what do you think one of the biggest challenges are to achieving that particular SDG? Okay, it's difficult to separate out the 17 goals because it's such an integrated agenda, and that's the beauty of it. Uh, but look, let me pick one, okay, because I have picked one <laughs> a couple of years ago uh, in this Oceans Conference, SDG 14. You know, coming from Pacific Island, we're particularly passionate about the healthy oceans. The ocean is caught in a cycle of decline. We know this. We see the plastic washed up on our beach, uh, beaches everywhere in the world, apart from you know five-star hotels where the beaches are raked in the morning. So marine pollution is a reality. Uh, we see the dead fish ending up on our beaches because the ocean is getting too hot in the tropics. We hear about the ocean acidification, which is going to possibly you know, cause all uh, calcium-based life in the ocean to uh, die out. So no more shellfish or vertebrae, you know, fish and so on. Uh, so um, we know that the, that the fish stocks of the world are being depleted at unacceptable rates and that sustainable management is possible. Uh, so there are, there are so many uh, areas of concern in relation to the ocean that we got together got this SDG 14 in place, but then we said, okay, how are we going to implement it? How are we going to make sure we stay honest to this? So the first of what I hope will be a series of conferences on implementing SDG 14 and making sure it's happening in all its diverse uh, segments. Uh, the first of those will happen 5 to 9 June uh, next year here at the United Nations. It'll be the jewel in the crown of the 71st session. 
uh, the, I see it as the game changer when we start to reverse the cycle of decline in which the ocean is caught. And if we keep to that program for the rest of the 230 agenda, I believe we will give our grandchildren a healthy ocean in 2030. Thanks for the question. Another question over here? No. Hi, my name is Angie Ortiz, and I go to school in the South Bronx. I'm Grismelli Geraldo, I go to the same school. And we're both seniors, and we just wanted to know, how do you make your goals relevant for students who are interested in technology today? Yeah. Well, uh, innovation is an essential part of the future, and your generation is gonna provide most of that innovation. The main thing is that you understand all of the 17 goals because technology will play a part in all of them. I've just been talking about oceans, you know, the role of drones in policing marine protected areas, for example. Um, you could take any one of these 17 goals and you would see technology playing a vital part. Central thing about technology is that it is shared. You know, there's no point in people being selfish about their, their technology. This is something, uh, the, the 230 Agenda, the whole of humanity is tied up in. It's no good just one community doing okay and the rest doing terribly. So technology has to be shared. And the United Nations is doing a lot to, uh, to, do, to, to get that sharing aspect uh, in place. And if you study uh, the SDGs, you'll find that that is contained within the 230 Agenda. So to you and your generation, it's, it's, it's your agenda. You're the inheritors of it. So, um, good luck on that. From Dot Sub, um, with the 7.2 billion people on the planet who speak 6,800 languages, and all 17 SDGs are, have to be communicated to these people, as far as I know, there's been nothing being talked about about enabling all of this dialogue and this wonderful media that's happening to be available in other languages. And there's 500 million people that speak indig indigenous languages that are not part of the conversation. So I'm just wondering if you're aware of any efforts or have thought about how to do this so that all of this amazing media that's being created this session, Sergio and I are in discussions about doing something to solve that problem, and we'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Oh, it's, a, it's a very valid uh, point, and thanks for making it. And I'm going to ask Sergio to follow up with my team on exactly that, because what I, I've asked my team to finalize their strategy by the end of October, and then we're going to get to work. And in, the, in that, uh, uh, an essential part of that strategy is communications. Because I have this aim of making sure that by the end of the 71st session, every human being knows what the SDGs are. They may not be able to recite them by rote, but they will know that this is the recipe for mankind, for humankind's survival on this planet. And that if they don't take it seriously, then uh, they're not taking life seriously. So how do you get that across to somebody who speaks, you know, in my part of the world, Melanesia, we have 25% of the world's living languages. So we're very familiar with this point of, you know, how do you communicate with somebody in a small language group? Because nobody can be, I don't want to do the cliche, but nobody can be left behind on this, right? So some guy who's speaking in a language group, and that's his only language, where there's maybe only 500 people speak that language, as is in the case in Melanesia for hundreds of languages, uh, we have to get that across. But I have to say that's probably mainly the national responsibility, but obviously we have to help the nations concerned as to how to do that. So there's thank you for raising There's it. already a head start with an organization called iEARN that has 50,000 teachers in 140 countries that is already agreeing to teach the, millennium, uh, the sustainable development goals. So I'd love to share that with you because I know the founder. So it's something that can be a Fantastic. big head start for what no, you're doing. I'd appreciate that. I'll, I'll introduce you to uh, Ambassador Williams. Uh, Decima Williams, who's heading up that SDG implementation team. Good point. Uh, I think that's uh, all the time we have for all the questions. Um, thank you so much to the President of the UN General Assembly for joining us. Thank you so much for everybody here and for putting this uh, SDG uh, media tent together, Sergio. And uh, thank you very much.